overall, I was expecting to see a horrible, horrible dynamite, but I think some of it was pleasantly surprising to me. Let's go through a couple of bookmarks I have. I like All this right. card, actually. <laughs> this, this made me laugh. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Robert is seeing a little preview of Tony Khan opening the show, and he was in... He said he couldn't. He wasn't medically cleared to leave the draft. Whatever he's doing, the NFL draft for the Jacksonville Jaguars. I don't. I, I really yeah. would love to know what he knows about football and NFL. But okay. The same thing. The same thing he knows about wrestling. It seems like. I don't know. I don't think there's enough time for him to be watching wrestling and covering NFL stuff and whatever else he does. I think that's why all his ventures kind of suffer. But anyway, so. The Young Bucks cut them off because they're EVPs. And they explain that they didn't get fired because they have ironclad contracts, right? Mm. Is that what happened? Because everyone's wondering, oh, why wouldn't they fire them if they fired CM Punk just for getting close to him? So, anyways, you, uh, this was funny, right, Robert? Do you, do you like this? Do you like the Young Bucks? I like them. The... I like them better now than than before this new gimmick. That's for sure. Uh, they're, they're not more the worst they're actors. More, they're more entertaining. And this this segment, I, I got a kick out of it. They they cut off their own boss. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I do want to see how this goes down when Tony Khan comes back, or if he's gonna be on the show, or what the heck. Mm-hmm. How they're how they're gonna make this makes tr- make sense? Which of course, Vlad. AW doesn't make sense. I know you're gonna say that, but well, okay. I have to, you're taking. I didn't say anything yet. But you're just assuming I'm gonna crap all over. That. Oh, the opening is all the elite stuff. It's all That's elite. Hilarious. Elite and Jack Perry. They should just put Jack Perry in the elite at this point, because yeah, I know the opening sequence is. <laughs> it's pretty funny. All right, let me move on with the show. I didn't bookmark everything, but let me see what we have. I think Swerve Strickland opened the show, right? Yeah, so the champion comes out, cuts a promo, says some shit about the Young Bucks. He said it was a bitch move, what they did to Tony Khan, right? And then the Young Bucks came up on the screen, and they said that there was a number one contender for his title, and Christian's music hit. So Christian is with the bad guys, which I think is a good, funny way for him to get heat. But anyways... So Christian's the new number one contender out of nowhere. So that's where I popped, right, Vlad? I'm a big Christian fan, as (laughs) you know. And Christian's back, and I'm like, yes, okay. So he gave up the TNT title, and now he's in the world title picture, which makes sense because he really is one of the best that AEW has had in AEW's history. And then he sucker punches Swerve, and they – well, Swerve kind of makes a comeback, fights them off, but in the end they do beat him down. And oh my bad, or winded by accident. But yeah, they do beat him down and leave him laying, as they say. And Christian mentions a couple things. He said that he that this is getting him back for for Strickland breaking into Nick Wayne's house and beating him up right back when Nick Wayne was a baby face good guy. And then uh, he also said that he was mad at him for when they were a tag team at All In that. He blames Swerve for them losing to Sting and Darby. So, okay, I don't know. I don't. I really didn't think they had to bring up any of that old stuff. I think this was good enough on its own, just coming in trying to attack the world champion. But he did say something about Swerve's daughter, right? Is that was that the savage jab of the night? Should we play it? Your daughter feels like she doesn't even know you. Oh, hold on. I'll rewind it a little bit because he got cut off. Into it, to the point. He told him that uh, he remembers Swerve saying that uh, he put so much into becoming champion that his he hasn't even been around his daughter and that his daughter doesn't even know him or recognize him at Your this point. Your daughter feels like she doesn't even know you. Well, Swerve, when I'm finished with you, your daughter's not going to want to know you. But I can promise you this, your daughter is going to have a father that she can be proud of for the rest of her life. Oh, so she's she's going to invite Swerve's daughter to be his daughter. Is that what he's saying? It wasn't one of his most savage attacks, but it was, you know, he had to bring up a family member, I guess. Well, I think she didn't mention any dead relatives. <laughs> That's true. He didn't know of any, if he knew of any. 
<laughs> he yeah, if he knew it, he, he would have mentioned them exactly. Well, okay, so I'm happy about Christian being back. Any comments, Vlad? Um, you know, yes, I will say I agree with you. This was not, this was not bad. This was okay. This was a pretty good opening segment. I, you know, I'm a big fan of Christian as you are. I, I think he is one of their best, and he's definitely a guy that can get crazy heat. Uh, so, yeah, I'm actually thinking this is not a bad idea. So I'm for it. Let's just see where it goes. Let's just see where it goes, though. Man, I would love to see him as AEW champion, man. Even without his previous history, just his AEW history, he deserves a run, I think. But uh, Robert, before I move on. Um, all right, so re rewinding just a bit uh, towards the beginning, when uh, when the Young Bucks uh, were introducing the, the new um, contender sure. for the title, the way they described the new contender, I, I thought it was going to be gonna, gonna be Kenny Omega because Kenny Omega was already advertised to make his return here, right? And they mm -hmm. said it's a, it's a Canadian, a, a, a former Can uh, Canadian that was a former champion. So that plus the fact that Kenny Omega was already advertised to return. I was like, all right, it must be Kenny Omega. And then um, when when it turned out to be Christian, uh, I got swerved right there. Mm. Um, but, but yeah, <laughs> you sure, you sure did. I sure, I sure did. But hey, you know what? The, this is cool. I, I like Christian too, and I think I think this should be an entertaining feud. All right, all right. Yeah, I I think so too. I hope Christian wins the title, but I don't know. Uh, if not here at some point. Last thing, Robert, before you got to leave was Kenny Omega's return. He got the big, you know, ring announcement from Justin Roberts and everything that he's from. Well, he's not from North Carolina, but for some reason, something about North Carolina. I don't know. <laughs> so Kenny Omega comes know. out, coming back from injury, and he gives this whole story about how he had diverticulitis and he still has it. And his... It was a weird story. It was very sad and emotional that he had a, had to make a choice between having surgery and ending his career or not having surgery. And I guess it could always, something could always happen and he could always have to end up going to have that surgery anyways, right? Am I, did I summarize that well enough or no? I think you pretty much nailed it. <laughs> yeah, very emotional AEW type promo all up in his feelings and stuff. Um before I move on to what happened at the end of it, I guess I'll get comments from from you guys and how, you know, he was fired up and he was saying, well, you know, he was he was very shaking and trembling and he had anxiety for many months and then he wasn't sure if he could come back and then he heard the fans as he was walking out and you know he he lost all that tremble and he he's back and he's gonna he's gonna give us the end of Kenny Omega's career. What do you guys think of this? I'll start with Robert. Is it a good promo? It was good. Nothing spectacular, but it, it was mm -hmm. good. Yeah. <laughs> this is as good as it gets for Kenny Omega. I mean, come on. Sure. This is an important situation for him. He's coming back. Yeah. And he's got center stage. He's got five good minutes to talk. <clears throat> Vlad, I know you're a big critic of Kenny Omega. You want to give this uh, yeah, well, promo and some analysis? I mean, I guess if, if compared to his other work, this was probably the best – AEW promo I've ever seen him do. I mean, that, but that's like a, again, we're grading on the curve here because it's AEW and it's Kenny Omega and he's really a horrific promo. So this was, I think it was a lot of from the heart. He was talking from the heart. Um, I'm sure he's had issues, a lot of health issues. I don't really see how he's going to, it doesn't seem like he's going to be able to come back anytime soon based on what he was saying though. So I don't really, this was only to, it wasn't really a comeback. It was just more of an angle to get more heat on this former, well, this former group, but you know what I mean? So I, I don't see him back like next week or after this attack type of thing, you know? Well, he did um, take a bump as you'll, as we'll see. Hold on. I'll play it in a second. Let me, let me play what happened afterwards. Okay. So sure. after he talked yeah. about his health issues, he finally addresses the elite and his friends, the other EVPs, the other executive vice presidents, the Young Bucks who attacked Tony Khan anyone, last week. Anyone watch Dynasty? And here's it's what he said. Piece of business. When we're talking about colostomy bags, why not talk about two other shit bags while we're at it? 
Okay, so that was the first moment where we find out that he is not going to be with the elite anymore or with the young bucks because he called them pieces of shit or bags of shit, I guess. So, Nicholas. Matthew and Nicholas. You've been running roughshod over this company and embarrassing yourselves more than you've embarrassed yourselves ever before in the past. And you can do that. You're free to do that as EVPs. But what you forget is that there's also one other EVP. I may be fired from the elite, but you can't fire me as an EVP. So as far as I'm concerned, until someone says otherwise, a part of the power in this company belongs to the best bout machine. All right, so he's here to oppose the elite, right? And they're running rough shot, as he said, over this company. I like, I like that line. That, that was what they used to say about the NWO, running rough shot over the company. That's just like yeah. what the Young Bucks are doing right now. So. Well, you know what? Though I was thinking as you were saying it, as as you were showing what you said, he might not be able to wrestle, but maybe he could be used in like some sort of uh, role where he's battling with you know the elite, but as like an EVP instead of a wrestler. Type of thing. I guess that could. That could yeah, sort of I'm, I'm kind of struggling to see how he's not back if he took the bump that he took today or on Wednesday. Uh, yeah. Here, so. Okada comes out, and this is an ambush. Okada tells him that he's going to steal his nickname. He's now going to be the best bout machine. <laughs> and then Jack Perry comes from behind and attacks him, sucker punches him. And then I think Kenny Omega kind of gets the upper hand and suplexes him. So there. So now he's doing the thing, the Bret Hart thing, where he's going to sell his stomach for the rest of his career for every single move he does. The way Bret Hart would have like a knee injury and just limp around for the whole fucking match. So this is the new thing for Kenny Omega. So look, so I don't know if he has really has diverticulitis and he's out there suplexing people, you know, Vlad, I don't know. I don't, you know, is, is this, uh, is this really real? Is he like, <laughs> gonna die at any moment possibly well what? i don't know if he's gonna <laughs> die but i mean i would think that he probably does have the disease uh, i mean it's been why else has he not been in wrestling if he doesn't have something right so but as far as the how bad it really is in reality as opposed to how it is in, in the angle i don't know i guess we'll have to see if he ends up coming back fine i mean they, they could probably use him they could use him for this so, yeah, he said any blunt force trauma to his stomach and, you know, it'll be the end of him. And then he just took a steel chair to the stomach from Jack Perry. And then the Elite come out and give him the V-trigger to end the show. Just to summarize, just to give you guys what happened in case you guys don't know. So, yeah, the Elite come out, lay out Kenny Omega, and I think the the FTR, right, are the ones who come out to help Kenny Omega, which is a little weird. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, CM Punk was involved in that fight with Kenny right. Omega, and now FTR is supposed to be friends with them in the storyline. Okay. I don't well, know. Well, not that they're friends, but they hate the, the, the elite. Know, the elite, yeah. Okay. All right. Robert, any comments about this angle here with Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks. Did you like this? Yeah, I mean, th this is one of the better angles involving the Elite in a while, so sure, why not? Um, but uh, as far as, um, you know, how serious Kenny Omega's condition is, I, I would imagine that if he's really going to come back to wrestle, it, it can't be as serious as he's claiming it to be Agre agreed so but but i i don't i really i really don't know i haven't really checked on his um actual like real status or like how so how legitimate um how, how legitimate his um his condition is as, as far as like compared to what he's actually telling the fans right now so we'll see all right vlad any final comments about dynamite today yeah i think i stand by what i said last week which was look i'm not a fan of any of these people i don't particularly like them or respect them or like we're, we don't agree 
on what good wrestling is. Uh, but I will say this, that this is an angle. It's something. Robert said this is the, like the, the best angle in a while with the league. I think this is the only angle that I've ever seen in five years with the elite, really. The only one that really sticks. So I would say uh, at least it's something, which is what I was said last week. You know, they're going with something. I'm not saying it's going to work out. I'm not saying they even know what the heck they're doing. But at least there's something involved that's not just, let's just have a match and for the sake of having a match and let's just put on a seven-star banger, as Kahan would say. Um, you know, so yes, I'm, I'm at least I'll give them that. They're trying something. 